Welcome once again to another SY2 screencast and what we're going to look at in this short video is the use of secondary quantitative data in sociological research. So in the last few screencasts we've been looking at the main types of uh, primary research methods that sociologists use to gather first-hand data, uh, particularly different uh, types of observational methods and different ways of asking questions. What we're going to start to look at in the next few screencasts is the use of secondary data. In other words, the use of information which already exists. In other words, the use of second-hand data that's been produced by somebody other than the sociologist doing the research. And just as with primary research, you could produce either quantitative or qualitative data, uh, secondary data can also be presented either in the form of numbers or statistics, in other words, quantitative data, or it can be based on um, a qualitative approach where we're using secondary data uh, that is based on rich, in-depth data. And what we're going to do in this first screencast is focus on the use of quantitative secondary data. Now the most important source of secondary quantitative data in sociological research are official statistics. And official statistics are quantitative data that have been produced either by the national government or by local government. The most famous example of official statistics in the UK is the census and the census is sent to every household uh, in the UK every 10 years and this must be filled in by law and it deals with various questions that help the government uh, to plan for the future so it asks people questions about things like their family structure their occupation, their religion, their ethnicity and so on uh, other examples of official statistics that would be useful in sociological research include things like exam results, uh, official statistics on crime, uh, employment statistics and so on. Now the use of official statistics in sociological research tends to have uh, a number of distinct advantages. Uh, the first obvious advantage of using official statistics is they are readily available uh, via websites such as the Office for National Statistics and this obviously means that they can save the sociologist uh, a lot of time and money. Secondly, the government surveys that are used to produce uh, official statistics are usually very well planned with detailed self-completion questionnaires or structured interviews and large representative samples. So the use of official statistics um, can help make sociological research much more representative. Also many examples of official statistics are what we call hard statistics. And what this means is they are statistics that are unusually both reliable and valid. In other words they accurately measure what they're supposed to, uh, that's validity, and if somebody checks the data they will get the same results, that's reliability. So statistics like marriage rates or birth rates or divorce rates are examples of hard statistics. They accurately measure uh, virtually all cases. Also another obvious advantage of using uh, government statistics is they're conducted on a regular basis and this can allow for comparisons over time and the identification of important social trends. Even though official statistics are often uh, an invaluable source of data uh, for sociologists, there are certain types of official statistics that need to be treated with a degree of caution. And these are what we might call soft statistics. And these refer to uh, phenomena which are much more difficult to measure and define in a clear-cut way. For example, if we look at uh, police crime statistics, they only measure the amount of crimes reported to the police and recorded by the police. 
And of course, this represents just a small minority of the total amount of crime uh, that is committed within the UK. And as we can see in the cartoon, uh, a rise in certain types of crimes might simply reflect uh, the change in priorities of the police. So I think interpretivist sociologists, those sociologists who are against the idea that sociology can and should be scientific, uh, would be very critical of many forms of official statistics. They would argue that official statistics only represent how the authorities define things like uh, crime, but also the example of suicide that we've looked at in previous lessons. So as you can see uh, in the cartoon on the screen, from an interpretivist point of view, suicide statistics aren't objective measures of how many suicides there are, but simply a measure of how many deaths coroners had defined as a suicide. So the argument here is that statistics aren't objective facts, they're socially constructed, they reflect uh, the common sense ideas of the officials that compile statistics such as statistics on suicide. And also another important reason why we might need to treat certain forms of official statistics with caution is that official statistics are government statistics and they therefore might be politically biased. So for example, famously the Conservative government of the 1980s and 1990s uh, changed the way in which unemployment was defined and counted over 30 times and every change but one resulted in a decrease in unemployment numbers. So in this screencast we've been looking at uh, secondary quantitative data focusing on official statistics. What we're going to start to have a look at in the next screencast is the use of more qualitative forms of secondary data.